Going back to Obadiah 1 and 7, all the men of thy confederacy have brought thee even unto the border. The men that were at peace with thee have deceived thee and prevailed against thee. They that eat thy bread have laid, who, who eat their, those who they give their, what would they call that? They give their support. If, if, if they don't believe, if they don't support the U.S. ideology of the attachments that comes with her particular help and her protection of military might and her influence and you know, the filth and the abomination and the religion that, that it brings with it and the lifestyle that it brings it. If you don't accept that, then they sanction those particular countries or whatever. They don't, they, 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 yeah, people say they double crossed these particular countries, other governments or whatever. Time and time again and again. And, you know, those of us in the truth, those who have been in, in the, the quote unquote, in the ghettos, God's sons and daughters who've survive and, and make it through COINTELPRO through the prison the industrial the prison industrial complex. Okay, that pipeline how they put all the, the quote unquote gangster rap and all the, the wicked movies or what we call it, gangster movies and did what targeted that towards this particular group of people. A people who was already, you know, uh how how would you say, kicked and, and held and pushed down. So my goodness, there there's a judgment coming, dear family. So again, the pride of Esau, the pride of Babylon has deceived her. Her military might, her, her ingenuity have deceived her. They that eat thy bread have laid a wound under thee. There is none understanding in him. Shall I not in that day, saith the Most High Ahia, even destroy the wise men out of Edom and understanding out of the Mount of Esau? And thy mighty men, O Teman, shall be dismayed to the end that every one of the Mount Esau may be cut off by slaughter. So if you join allegiance with the Mount of Esau, Yeshia, that man that came up out of the sea, there's a judgment against Esau. And I'm just showing us how it ties together. Why was it? For the violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee, and thou shall be cut off forever. Never rule again. So prophetically, dear family, it was the eldest son that would carry the legacy the legacy of what? Being minister and priest to carry on their fathers and their grandfathers, that heritage of, of being priest and ministering ministering in, in the temple or the sanctuary, if you will. But again, the Most High in, in, in the scriptures just said that her pride has perverted her and blinded her. So they didn't know that they were being taken in the net by the Most High. Let me show you something else here now. Thinking of how the scripture says in Revelations 2 and 24. When I'm looking at this, the, the pictures here, this, the same the same family, like, the, 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 when I say family, I'm saying the, the family of Esau, of Amalek, the, 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 the Mount of Esau. That's what it says, that everyone from the top of the Mount of Esau, the scripture just said that the Most High was going to cut off. So these are the things that, that they don't teach or they don't, you know, they don't regularly like go over the go over these particular scriptures. This is not the feel good. This is the, the God of the Bible, you know, recompensing like we read in Joel chapter three for for that which was done to his people. Now, mind you, it's stated this is also out there that what that. There were people who whitewashed the images of the actual, uh, the biblical uh, people that were in the Bible and changed their identity. I mean, think about the level of that. And then, and then had people, you know, on all sides, you know, worship and, and think that, that, that that's what, what Christ was like. The white, the, the white, worship what they call the white Jesus. When we know that in, in Hebrew that the Messiah's name wasn't Jesus because he was he was Hebrew. It was it's Yeshia. But, but again, I just wanted to, to point that out because think about how many of God's sons and daughters are sons. And when you go back to Joel three and daughters, I gave the analogy of a family. If you own some land and you were not and and, and, like, or, and it was your land, and then I came to your land. Under, under false pretense. And I'm like, oh, yeah, well, you know, could you help me and show me the way? And I'm here, and, could, and you were kind enough to share with me. And then I go back and I snake you, and, and I tell, 
He just uh, look. I got there's a family over there, and he, this family that they're really nice. They're really they're really gullible. It, they, you know how people would say the suckers. We can get them. So then you you know you tell all your boys and you tell all the the people or your your, your group of bandits, <laughs> right? But they, they, the, the land is pretty over there. We can take this, their sons and their daughters, or whatever the case is, and that's what happened. That's I mean I, I don't want any other way to say it. That actually happened. So we're living out the results that the God, the God of righteousness, is putting everything back into place. No celebrity. I mean, none of the, the gossip about the latest gossip of what this celebrity did and who's in the Illuminati and this and that. Everyone that sat down to take the bag, dear family. To operate those, they knew what they was doing, so they got to repent of it. Okay, they got to recover themselves from the snare of the devil, and I still didn't. And again, I wanted to show you. I'm not going to have time in this time, but this is what we're going to end this particular study. I'm going to tie it all together for us right now. But look what Revelations two and twenty four says, and this is like it tells us. But Yeshua says to him, right? He says this, and uh, where this is at? What, what church was this? The church of Thyra, Tyra, right? Let's just jump right down to it. Verse 21 says, And I gave her a space to repent of her fornication. This is like, like, like in verse 20 says, Notwithstanding I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which called herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication. Isn't that what we just read in 1 Timothy's? Chapter three, knowing the uh, excuse me, not first, not, not chapter three, first Timothy chapter four, knowing the latter times, many shall turn from the faith, the faith giving heed to seducing spirits. Are you seeing this? Teaching what? To teach and seduce my servants, the servants of the Most High, the tribe of Judah. Even our forefather Judah said, "Listen, women, money." And alcohol, be on alert from that because that will cause the, the tribe of Judah to fall. So when you look at our community, what do you see? When I say a community, I'm saying like when you look at it as a whole, man, those, you know, and I'm speaking in layman's terms, those black people are African American, man, those brothers, they showed up, the sisters, they, they didn't know how to get down, right? All in the video, the pool parties, and you, you have these other people who, actually own all these particular things, own copyrights and all that. So now they're, they're and it's like, my goodness, we got to be wiser than that. So I'm so glad, even though we have to endure this and go through the perils, family, and understanding this can be painful, but on the side of the Most High and being on the right side of judgment, dear family, there's no other place that I would rather be and Prayfully that you would rather be, but we got to endure it all. As the scripture says, through much tribulation, we must enter into the kingdom of heaven. But getting on point, though. So I want you to see the connection. When you go into Revelation 17, it talks about, it talks about Babylon, the mother of harlots. So Babylon encompasses and has that spirit of Jezebel. She's the mother harlot. And all the little baby the baby churches that came out of the, the Catholic church, if you will, right? Is little baby harlots running around, seducing God's people, saying that the laws are done away, you can eat whatever you want to eat. Don't You don't keep the holy, but we keep all these other things. We, we celebrate the things of Babylon, dear family. And now we're right there on the precipice of this, you know, a global, what that's what they're saying, a global, how would you call it? A global war. A world war. Just like in World War II, they had to get the Americans uh, in it. And guess who was at the front? Guess who the Americans put at the front of it? That's right. The tribe of Judah. Put them right out there and put them in the in, in, in the toughest areas and where, where it's the most intense battling and fighting at. And the Most High has been merciful upon us. See? So it says here, Verse 20, notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calls herself a prophetess, to teach and seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. That's the, that's the holidays. So on Thanksgiving, when people take their turkey and they say, oh, Thanksgiving, don't thank you. They're saying, they're saying, they're saying thank you to God or they say Jesus. Or, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Right. 
Christmas, all these particular things, the 4th of, the fourth of July, right? All these particular celebrations, these are ceremonies. These are the these are the, the feast of the Gentiles, dear family. So it says in verse 22, Behold, I will cast her into bed into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. But again, like I, I stated from the very beginning of this, I said we're way past convincing anyone. If if you're able to hear and see and you're new to it, and when I say new to the maybe you know to this understanding, the most high already he he ordained you to get this. But now you gotta hold to it. You gotta do your due diligence. Remember Second uh, Ezra 13 and, and 23, the most high said he will save those who have faith and works towards him. The perils are coming. The perils are here. Look what he says now. And I will kill her children with death. How's that? War. Fighting up in these up in these armies or whatever the case is. Joining the military. Not just that. In the street and in, in the gangs and, 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 you know, if you are embracing something that is not of the most high. But in your mind, remember it says hypocrisy. I can go back to 1 Timothy 4. It's where we at, dear family. So the Most High says he would do what? He would kill her children with death and all the assemblies, I know it says churches, shall know that I am Ahia, I'm he, which searcheth the reins and hearts. It's not enough to just sit there and for, or not enough for me to just be talking at the side of my neck and my mouth if I'm not really meditating upon the words of the Most High, if I'm not really convicted, if I sin against the Most High or I do something out of ignorance and descend and then all of a sudden don't, don't don't repent of it. Don't feel sorry for the things that I did. Not make efforts and, and, and strive to make great efforts to do to do what's right in his sight. Even if it means suffering, even if it means that I gotta be by myself, even if it means being ridiculed or being laughed at and shunned by everyone else because they think that they think that they're right and that, that I'm crazy or I'm wrong. So he says, and I will give unto every one of you according to your works. Crystal clear. Let me show it to you again. Right here, verses 23. I will save at that time, he himself, Ahia, the great I am, will protect those who fall into peril, the grave dangers, money woes, where you get your next meal at, work, all, the, all of the stuff, persecution, affliction. I will protect those who fall into peril, who have works and faith in me, saith the Almighty. The Most High said, if we have faith in him, he will protect us. See? I will give unto every one of you according to your works. Revelation 24. But unto you I say, and unto the rest in Thyatira, as many as have not this doctrine, and which have not known the depths of Satan. There's many people who don't know the depths of Satan, don't know that he comes as an angel of light. He comes saying that he's... The most high, he comes as your friend. Let me make things better for your situation. Giving you everything just because they say it's good for you does not mean that it's right for you and, and me. That's how he operates. And that's how his pundits operate. Remember the philanthropists? They try to give to society. But if they raped and pillaged and took everything, I mean, we want to do for ourselves. We want to serve the most high God. I want to serve my God, the most high of high outside of man's influence and religion, outside of their lives. See? So that's why it tells us, it says, there's many which have not known the depths of Satan. So them changing things, they're thinking to change times and laws and all these particular, playing with the, with, with the so-called calendars and doing all these things. They thought that they can change times and laws, but could they? Absolutely not. So we have as markers of testimony, the Bible says in Revelation 12 and 11, that we, and they loved not their life unto the death, and they overcame him. They overcame Satan. Through what? By the blood of Hamashiach and the word of their testimony. They had the faith in the works to go with it. Faith without works is dead. So it tells us here, he says, as they speak, I will put upon you none other burden, but that which ye have already hold, fast till I come. So in other words, that which you know of, you're responsible for. But there are many who are willingly ignorant just because they don't want any hardships or whatever the case. They don't want to believe. They've been, you get what I'm saying? Their life 
The devil has has literally, and, and I, my, my prayers are for those that the devil has a snare on their minds. I, I truly pray that the Most High breaks the grips of the enemy off their lives, off their lives, and peel the scales off their eyes, that they can behold for themselves and get this and know it. 